So yeah, what's going on guys? Uh, this is OBB, the iCast News Guy. And you guys take a look at the introduction. Yeah, I am in different attire. I literally just filmed, the, filmed that introduction like a few days ago. And uh, I literally passed out after that introduction. So <laughs> luckily I got a lot more energy today. And uh, yeah, we got ourselves something that a lot of people have been waiting for quite a while. A new diecast haul video. And you're probably like, all right, this is the shit you got from Christmas. Well, actually, I got this before Christmas because, you know, it's 2020. A lot of weird shit has happened. But yeah, if you guys uh, literally have been living under a rock like Patrick Starr, um, <laughs> by the way, I mean... Spongebob, gotta love that show. Um, got a lot of cool Spongebob and Buffalo Bill stuff from Christmas, as you can tell. That crazy Buffalo Bills fan that reviews NASCAR die cast. Um, good time to be a Bills fan, though. They are kicking some ass today. But enough of me getting cocky about the Bills. <laughs> uh, we got ourselves to talk about some uh, new shit I got from a place called Jack's Racing Collectibles. But bam I got the card right here. Um, luckily the front camera doesn't want to focus shit, but whatever, though. Uh, you can visit their website at www.jacksracingcol.com. So... C-O-L-L. -L. And, um, yeah, this is probably a place that you guys might know quite well from one of my good buddies, Race Day 2011. Um, whole funny story about that, guys. I literally took a four-hour trip all the way from Syracuse, New York, to that place that is in Riverside, New Jersey. Yeah, uh, yeah, Riverside, okay. Um, gotta make sure I am saying the right, uh, place. Otherwise, you're gonna look like an idiot, Brian. But, yeah, this was a really cool place I went to, and if you guys have already saw what Rob showed with the photos, the photos and the videos don't lie. And they don't mean shit when you're actually in there, all right? Um, at the end of this video, I will show you guys some photographs and uh, my probably my initial reaction in there. I don't think I ever feel my reaction, but if I had to describe it, it was probably me being in a daze. So, yeah, I was just like, holy shit. And I easily got lost, easily. I mean, talking about comedy material, I got lost in that place. It's literally full of rooms and rooms within rooms and rooms full of NASCAR diecast. I was like, if I would have a heart attack and a stroke at this second, which I don't want to joke about that, but if I did, that'd be probably a good place to die at. <laughs> but anyways, enough of me going and talking. Uh, you're probably wondering what kind of stuff I got. Well, I got four 124s and 16 164s, which, you know, seems good about and I brought $300 to that trip. Um, and let's just say I almost practically spend almost my, my money. Let's just say 278 out of 300 But I will say, though, I got some good shit, guys. But, yeah, if you're ever in New Jersey, uh, feel free to check out that place. Um, which, by the way, I can't thank you guys enough for all the support you guys have given. From not only Jax, but also Osevery's Collectibles. Um, Tom and the, both of the owners have been loving me and many others to deaths. Um, just really thankful that you guys have been supporting those small local businesses. Because at the end of the day... With this whole shit going on with the pandemic and the corona crap, they're the ones that need this money the most. So, yeah. Anyways, probably wondering what kind of stuff I got. Let's go on to the 124s. All right. The first one up. This one I immediately had to get um, as soon as I saw Rob's photos because literally uh, talk about like how, you know how people study for an essay and a final exam? I was literally studying Rob's photos and I was like, which car should I get? Which car should I get? I mean, I don't really collect that much 124s, but if it's... I'm going to say off the bat, these four 124s I've got, if you guys know me well, it's either going to be a Carl Edwards car, a Mark Truex Jr. car, or a Ryan Blaney car. Maybe Matt Van Nettle too, because he's just technically my fourth favorite, but we'll just have to wait and see. So the first one up, if you guys remember this car a lot, he drove this at the 2009 Atlanta race. This is Carl Edwards 2009 Affleck Cancer car. Holy shit. This thing is a beauty. And I know everybody and my own grandmother can agree on one thing. I've said it. Rob said it. Garrett said it. Probably even a little Wrangler said it. The 2009 boxes for every single scale, 164s, 124s, any elites, they kick ass. We can never be this creative ever again when it comes to that. And look at that. They even have audacity to show the detail that they had. You know, it's just amazing how good quality NASCAR diecasts were back then. But we'll get on to the good shit right here. I already have all these cards unboxed and unopened for you guys. Because you guys probably want to see some good high quality 124s than the plastic crap that we have right now. I mean, sorry lying out, but it is true. And um, I know that there is there was a sticker on here that said, oh, it's like $69.95. And how about... I don't know, 49 or I think it was like 40 or 50 bucks I paid for this sucker. Which, in all honesty, I would pay that much money 
for a die cast that is this rare. I mean, this is like, what, like one out of 970? I think the last time I saw this car was on eBay. But here's the bad boy right here. And as cool as the box is, I mean, look at this thing. Look at that. Look at this. This is beautiful, man. We got all the different bright colors on this. Purple, green, blue, yellow. This car literally looks like a freaking rolling coloring book. Like, oh my God, guys, look at this. Um, like I said, the camera quality is not that good on the front of this camera, but unless I can find a way to put a mirror and use my rear cameras, because my rear cameras are really damn good. But look at that, guys. And look, look, the back opens. Oh my God. On an ARC diecast, there's a hair right there. Holy crap. Thank you, Sophia, one of my cats. It was a furry little Persian. But yeah, look at that. The deck lid opens, metal chassis, detailed chassis, rolling wheels, working suspension. I'm going to have a stroke. I'm going to have a stroke. I paid all this money for typically the base price of a 124 ARC diecast that we got right now. And you probably wonder why I collect a lot more of these older scale 124s than the new crap. It's because this is just beautiful, man. And one little thing I didn't realize is that if you look at those windows, yeah, they are not loose and sideways like some of my other cars, but there's literally an outline. See, there's green and yellow, red and yellow. I mean, that is some really cool attention to detail. And apparently the actual car was like that too. And if you look closely at this, uh, there's we got like a camouflage uh, background going on right here. That is sweet, man. Look at that. Even the roof flaps open. Oh, yeah. They probably open up the best part as well. The edge of detail as I'm trying to stick my finger in there. Um, no pun intended on what I just said there. Um, Lewis. <laughs> but we got edge of detail, man. That is beautiful. We got hoses. Look at that. All different types of textures right there. Rubber, plastic, metal. I mean, back where, you know, die cast quality was the real shit. So that is pretty damn awesome, man. Um just beautiful man even the interior man look at that the battery and the fire extinguisher everything on about this car is just beautiful man i probably like this side more because of the red but really glad i picked this car up and jacks had a few of those left but uh and to carry along with another 2009 car lovers diecast i had to get this one and my good buddy racing 2011 recommended me to get this car you guys know me i'm a carl Roberts fan but surprisingly i don't have this car in the 124 scale and they've made this scheme for several years now but i decided to get the og one from 09 when he first drove this iconic scheme the 2009 subway car guys so i got the car right here but i kind of went out of order and i'm going to show the box real quick once again the box is fucking badass i mean look at that man i love this box design love it a lot this one's a little more common but uh what like 1008 were produced so a little more common but still on the rarity side i mean this is probably the rare subway car you can get out here for carl edwards um but, yeah, there is one little thing I want to say about this car, which, you know, all I can say is look closely at the front. There's a specific logo on here that is not on the 124 scale. And you're probably wondering, okay, so all I know was the only ones that fucked up. Well, it was a misprint. Can you guess what it was? Yep, the Fusion logo was missing. But this is not just one car that did it. All the cars were like this. I do not know the 2009 164 had this, too, because the 2009 164 is just as hard to find. Um, I do have the 2010 COT with me. But yeah, I, I, I did not know that until now, but I can say right here, you know, one little error on a perfectly good detailed die cast. Shit, I can't complain on that. I might complain on a lot of stuff, but you know what, man? That's what decal custom stickers are for. So be it. I mean, with the quality I paid for this, I probably paid the same price for this as well, like 50 bucks if I had to guess. Um... 50 or 40 bucks somewhere in that range uh just ask rob he knows the prices more than i do because i literally lost track of how much i was spending i was like if i end up spending all my 300 dollars, i mean man this place is fucking worth it and i end up mostly did i had like 20 bucks left so that was a good gas ride and probably some dinner after that um but lordy almighty guys this paint scheme is really cool it's got a nice little texture to it where the freaking subway uh swirls are i mean um my God, I mean, a lot of people did got uh, they did got very used to this scheme, but this is probably, I don't know, one of my top five favorite schemes from Carl Edwards. I mean, Tony Stewart's 2008 subway car was pretty cool, but when they first introduced this, I was like, man, that is a cool looking scheme. And he kept it on ever since uh, until he left Roush at the end of 2014. So it's quite worth it. It's a shame he only wanted this car once in 2013 at Phoenix. I'm still trying to find the 2013 winner of that. That'd be pretty cool with the Gen 6 car. But um, I don't know if that car actually has the old hood design where, you know, you have to, like, play freaking, I don't know, Caduzel with the freaking hood. It's like, I'll push in and out and then open it up. Like, it's like, 
What's so hard about that, where you can just literally just do this? As much as I've criticized heavily on the COTs and how they look, the die cast quality on this is flat out phenomenal. And glad I got these 2009 cars from Jax. Um, a lot of COT stuff were there for 124 scales, but most of the 164s were dried up, but still managed to crack a few. All right, and these other two 124s I got are also in the same year, and it's with uh, my current favorite driver in NASCAR. Now, this car, I, I was surprised that they did not make this car. I, I did not know they made this car until now. I got this, as Rob likes to call it, the uh, clearance, or, the, you know, the little, uh, not the clearance bins, but this was known as, there's many different rooms at Jack's, and this one is where all the $20 124s are at. So, it's basically the cheap room. I mean, who doesn't like cheap 124s? $20 I got this bad boy. Would you believe that they made this car right here? This is Martin Truex Jr.'s 2007 Bass Pro Shops National Wild Turkey Foundation car. Now, the box looks pretty cool. It's got some customization to it. Not as good looking as the 2009 boxes, but I will say that is pretty damn cool. Um, and it is limited edition, but yeah, it says 25 bucks right there, but I think I probably paid 20 or 25. Either way, I can't complain for this, but I did not know they made this car. By the way, Teresa Earnhardt, do not sue me because I'm showing your freaking logo. So sue me, bitch. Sue me. <laughs> but for real though, um, this is a beautiful car, guys. I really do. But as soon as I open up this bad boy and take a look at it, I said, yep, this is going in my uh, car and selling back off to Syracuse. And now it's in my room. Look at how beautiful this thing is. The camera's not doing its justice. Is justice. Uh, apparently, I can't talk English now. Typical of me when I make long videos. This is pretty good. probably going to be a good half an hour video, depending on how much I talk about diecast. But the day glow orange on this is bright. So damn bright. Even brighter than the 2020 version, guys. I mean, this is beautiful, man. With the DEI stripes and the yellow stripe. I mean, if you're a big fan of the 2016 um, scheme that he had, you'll probably like this because it definitely has some resemblance. But look at those DEI stripes, man. That is beautiful. Got the nice little turkey right there. Um, I do like to, I do have a little nickname for this car as well. I like to call this the National What the Fuck car. So if you guys want me to do a review on that, I'm probably going to call it that car because... That is quite the acronym right there. So, the National What the Fuck Car. <laughs> Sorry, gotta be politically correct. National Wild Turkey Foundation. That's pretty cool. Pretty damn cool, guys. I mean, probably would have been a cool car to review during Thanksgiving. Maybe I'll wait until Thanksgiving next time, but I don't know. I don't think I want to wait that long because this is beautiful. I don't really review that much 124s, but heck, I don't think this was made in the 164 scale. So, if that's the case, I'm going to review it. Oh, yeah, and the DIN numbers. You guys probably wonder what the DIN numbers are. This is uh, 1,208. The Carl Everett Subway car was DIN number 226. And the Affleck Cancer car was DIN number 304. So no door numbers, but um, heck, at least we got some three-digit ones. This one's a four-digit, so it looks like they definitely made over 1,000 on this. But just, man, that, 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 this is the 2007 COI cars. The last year we had the official Gen 4 cars part-time, because, you know, part-time it was, you know, Gen 4, and the other part it was... Um, Gen 5 with the COT. But look at that, man. Beautiful detail. Amazing quality. And just, my God, guys. I mean, I just love this casting, guys. This casting is beautiful. And look at that. That is metal, guys. It is cold to the touch. It is hard. It is firm. Beautiful, beautiful detailed metal chassis. I mean, something we don't get anymore. You can actually feel how heavy this car is. And, heck, it has more weight to it than the crap we have now. $20. You can't beat that. This other one was definitely another car on my bucket list that I looked at Rob's video. I was like, dude, I have to get this car because this has such a cool finish to it. It's not a special finish, but it looks like it. It's a standard release car. But I looked everywhere on Jax. I probably went through every room. I literally lost count how many times I went through each room. I literally got lost. <laughs> a little funny story about that while I was going through each room. Certain someone comes up. You know, because we had a good amount of guests on here. And by the way, shout out to all the people out there who visited Jack's Race Collectibles. My good buddy's Race Day 2011. Uh, Matt D'Urkel, he has a YouTube channel as well. You better upload some more shit, man, because we need more diecast viewers on the, the community. Um, <laughs> um, Milo's Cup Series on Instagram and uh, uh, NASCAR Diecast Cup Series on Instagram. Um, I know it's acronymed. And also NASCAR Diecast 101. He also uh, met me and he's a big fan and he hooked me up and he got me this as well which I'm going to show you right here. 
Uh, he got me a liquid color card, guys. So shout out to NASCAR Diecast 101 on Instagram for hooking me up with the liquid color uh, William Byron Liberty University car. This car probably doesn't have the best gradients, but that green, man, is freaking beautiful. It's way better than the liquid color car that we got from Chase Elliott with the high racing truck, which they had a lot of those in the stock. I wonder why. But anyways, getting back to special finishes. Again, I was trying to find this car. I was like, where the hell is this car? Where the hell is this car? I went back in that same room that had all the Edwards and Truex cars, and it was tucked away in the corner by the door. I mean, figures my point. I was like, literally, I literally pulled like a John Panette moment. I was like, like how John Panette goes to Dairy Queen, and he's like, there it is! That was me when I found this car. This is, <laughs> this is cool. Mark Truex Jr.'s 2007 Bass Pro Shops Tracker Boats 35th anniversary car. Holy shit is this car beautiful again the dei logos are showing i mean heck sue me Teresa earnhardt that's upside down brian holy crap uh clearly cannot do a showcase and here's the new releases from obb uh we got this car right here just kidding <laughs> i'm having too much fun with this with this uh haul video so i hope you guys are enjoying it and if you guys haven't already comment like subscribe and let's get back to this but really cool box design but we're not here to show a box here's the car look at this Look at this. This is not a special finish. This is the actual paint scheme, guys. It's a nice metal flake finish where it transitions from silver to black. Something I know can't really do, but let me just say, I think the only thing I don't like about this car is the black logos. I mean, they're not where the black is, but you see it starts fading a little bit, but that's just a minor nitpick. It still looks really cool, but just like the, how the orange is on this car, the red is day glow. Definitely giving me some Steve Park vibes right there, looking at that uh, that bright red number one. Beautiful. The DEI stripes are nice and vibrant, too. This car is amazing. Oh, yeah, and uh, a little fun fact. I think he drove this car at the All-Star Race in 07, if I'm not mistaken, and the National Wild Turkey Foundation car. He drove that, I believe, at the Daytona Night Race. Um, both were one-off races, so one-of-a-kind special paint teams right here. But this is probably... One of my favorite, uh, probably my favorite Truex car I have in my collection by far in, in terms of just how this car looks, man. I mean, the camera's not doing its justice. I'll probably do a review on this too, but where it transitions, guys, it's like a metal flake and it transitions perfectly from silver to black. I mean, there's like no gap in the fade. Like if you literally put this at any angle, it literally, it's like shifting colors. And that is just something I really, really do like. There's a little bit of a decal overlap right here, but not so much. It's just how the decals lined up. But better than the shit we got right now, guys. I love the the casting on this. The Chevrolet Monte Carlo SS. The DEI stripes. The decklet. Hood flaps. The trunk. I didn't open up. I didn't open up any of the other stuff on the Wild Turkey car, but look at that, man. Look at that. That is just beautiful. Look at that detail. Oh, my God. I can't stress that enough how fucking awesome that is. That is really cool. Uh, I think I paid, uh, I don't know how much I paid for this. Um, probably, uh, well, definitely not $69.95. I probably paid, I don't know, like 30 or 40 bucks for that, if I had to guess. Um, like I said, I literally didn't pay attention to the prices. I just said, I got to have this car in my collection. And that's what I did. But that wraps up on the 124 scale, so hopefully you guys will take a break and pause this video maybe. Because if not, we're going to get on to the 164s, as I'm probably going to need a drink of water after the, doing this. So now it's going to get on to the good shit. We got the 164s. So this first one I got uh, was priced at $5.95, and um, it's another 2007 COY car, Gen 4. But every time I say COY, I mean Gen 4. Um, this I'm looking forward to do a review on. Uh, one of my all-time favorite paint schemes for Roush. Um, it's now Carl Evans' car. This is Matt Kenseth's 2007 DeWalt Tools Ford Fusion. Holy crap, is this thing a beauty. Um, I know Eric Eastep is probably going to love that, uh, even though he's way too big of a channel to watch my videos. But heck, you know, if somebody knows him and, he, and they tag and they I don't know, recommend this video to him, I mean, heck, that, that, that's going to be a cool uh, review to do. But uh, yeah, um, shout out to the Kenseth fans out there who are watching this video, if there's any left. But I know Eric is one of them. Um, and, man, but rest in peace to Matt Kenseth's career, guys, and for this year. I mean, definitely not the way to go out. Um, probably, I don't know. I mean, I know it's a tough circumstance with Chip Ganassi. Um, but, hey, that sucks for Matt Kenseth. But that's not the first Matt Kenseth car we got. So we do got another car in here to show you guys. Because um, I thought it would be a good way to segue this. As I'm trying to look for the other Matt Kenseth car that I got here. And um, it is buried somewhere. Here it is. 
This is another Matt Kenseth card that I picked up for $3. So $3, like a Jersey guy would say it. This is Matt Kenseth, 2004 Carhartt Ford um, Taurus. My Lord. I mean, first of all, the clamshell packaging. I love that a lot. Team Caliber diecast were definitely underrated, but they had a different mold to them. They were a little more heavier, uh, but my God, they were beautiful. And you guys can't probably see on the camera, but look at that silver chrome uh, side skirt and splitter. Look at that. That is beautiful, man. I mean, the Carhartt scheme, that is beautiful, man. I mean, I mean, any person who wears Carhartt stuff, I know Garrett does. I do as well with my job. Um, definitely am looking forward to review this, man. So I thought that'd be a good addition to go along with the DeWalt car from 07. But the 2004, man, I mean, this is bringing back so many great memories. Racing those EA Sports games. I do remember seeing both those cars in those games. All right, next up. Right here, we got ourselves the man, the myth, the legend. And he had a lot of these in stock for $4. I was able to pick up the rookie version of this guy who retired this year. And this is actually an Action Racing Collectibles um, dealer exclusive. So Jack has a lot of these. But anytime you see the word dealer exclusive, you got to get this. Because I'm not planning to review this or take this out of the box. This is Jimmy Johnson's 2002 rookie of, or well, rookie car. He probably is the rookie of the year because, you know, he did good in his rookie year. But, my God, I thought it'd be the bro. I don't really collect the Jimmy John stuff, but since it's his final year and his die casts are definitely going to be sky rocketing up in price, I'm like, for $4, I practically just robbed Jack. I mean, he probably could have made a big, big buck off this, but he had a shitload of these. But, as you can see, this is a dealer exclusive, and you can only get it at Jack's or any other place that, you know, sells this car. But... What a beauty that is, guys. And let's talk about the OG Winter Circles packaging. I mean, look at that, man. If you guys were collecting Escort ICAST 2000, I don't know where you've been because this right here is some premier shit right here. I mean, that is just beautiful. I mean, rest in peace to Winter Circles, man. That's the shit I grew up with, and that's basically how I got my NASCAR ICAST collecting starting, uh, started. I can't talk good grammar or English today. All right. Next up, we got ourselves some more older NASCAR diecasts, and this actually brings back a good memory to my first NASCAR race in 2008 at Kentucky Speedway for the NASCAR Nationwide Series, also known as the first time Joey Logano got his first win in the Nationwide Series. They had the 124 scale version of that car, but I didn't got it. My good buddy Rob did, and he's like, Ryan, why didn't you get this? Well, I wanted to get the 164, but there was a certain driver I met who drove the number five National Guard car. And it was Landon Castle. I remember that day. I was like, that was pretty cool when Landon Castle drove the five car. But this car reminds me of that. But this is Dale Jr.'s 2008 number five National Guard Chevrolet Impala um, for the Nationwide Series. The box is beautiful. My good buddy, Ray 2011 did a review of this back in 2018, I believe, when he went to Jack's, when they had a lot of other cool die cast. This is before I knew Jack or Jack Squat. <laughs> um, but what a cool looking diecast, guys. You guys are a big fan of the, of the, you know, the National Guard scheme that he drove in his first year with junior with not only Junior Motorsports, but also in the um, Cup Series for Henry Motorsports. This is a beauty, man. I mean, uh, th this is probably the National Guard car to get because they definitely overproduced the hell. I literally saw in the stock room where they have like a room full of boxes of 124s. Right in the middle... It's a shelf full of Dale Jr. stuff. I mean, forget about making a fort with toilet paper like these idiots are doing at the stores. You can make a freaking fort out of the Dale Jr. National Guard and Amp cars from 2008 because they had a shitload of them. It was just crazy. But, like, back to my point, this is a beautiful diecast, and I'm looking forward to review that. Next up, speaking of Joe Liano, this is the next car I got right here. This is, has some yelling to it because it was in the front of the room where, you know, the sunlight was shining. But, you know what, man? As long as the diecast is fine, I don't care. This is Joey Logano's 2010 Home Depot uh, Toyota Camry. As you guys can tell, this is on the Platinum cars. Well, some of you guys might know them as the, as the Elite cars, but they were known as the Action Race Collectibles Platinum Series. 2010 was the last year they ever made these things, and it's a damn shame because when I talk about the best 164 quality you could ever get, it's either these or the RCC Elite cars that you get in the low cases. Those are the best you can get, man. I mean, this is just fucking amazing. And a lot of people have been wondering when I'm going to do more reviews of these. You guys did enjoy my last one, which was the Mark Martin U.S. Army car. Well, guess what, baby? I got more of these suckers to review. I'm not the biggest fan of this guy. If you guys have seen my Discord, I'm not the biggest Joe Legano fan. But this paint scheme brings back a lot of cool memories. 
And, uh, you know, Joe Logano's cars from Joe Gibbs are actually starting to dry up. So I did a good job getting this car. Uh, the price tag I says 12 bucks, but I don't know. I think I got it a little bit cheaper because Jack was pretty considerable with his prices. I mean, when you spend a lot of money at Jack's, I mean, he will negotiate with you and throw in some cars for free, uh, just like Tom did for most of race collectibles. So a little fun fact. If you bring a lot of money and you spend quite well at those places, you might actually, I don't know, they might hook you up quite well. But Jack definitely loved us, that's for certain. Next up, this is another Roush car that I picked up for $3.95. And if you guys saw my uh, patriotic review of the Mark Martin 2000 uh, Stars and Stripes Valvoline car, this car is going to look pretty similar in terms of quality. This is Kurt Busch's uh, 2002 uh, Rubbermaid uh, Commercial Products Sharpie car. I think this was a, a car that he just drove at one race. I forgot where exactly, but I'm going to go ahead and unbox this because this comes with a case and a detachable body as well. And the deck lid opens too. Look at this, man. Rubber tires. This is beautiful, man. I mean, it's in a case, so the camera is not going to focus too well on that. But talk about beauty at its finest. This is freaking cool, man. Uh, it's even got a little card on the bottom that to, to represent the certifi certifi uh, certification of authenticity. This is just damn cool, man. Um, actually, the packaging is starting to come off a little bit. I don't know. I might have already peeked inside and looked at it because I was like, I got to feel this son of a bitch in. My God, it's a sexy looking car. So I'm looking forward to review that, guys. I mean, and if you guys see any diecasts out here that you like, feel free to tell me which cars you want me to review first. But I'll probably say that again at the end of this video because um, it's probably going to be more than half an hour because we're already 26 minutes in. Uh, next up, we got ourselves a Carl Everts diecast. I mean, are you not surprised? Are you not surprised? It's a Carl Everts car. This is. A car that surprisingly, uh, it looks like I got this car for eight bucks, so that's probably the same price I picked up the Joe Logano car from. Um, this is his, my, you guys already know it. I've said it so many times on my channels, but there's always new subscribers out there. They're like, what's your favorite paint scheme all the time? It's this bad boy right here. Carl Lovers' 2010 Aflac, or I'm sorry, <clears throat> Aflac Ford Fusion COT for Roush Ranger Racing. Jack had a lot of these. Jack had a, had a good, uh, had you know, not really a lot, but enough where if you can find one, you can find one. There was an Office Depot 2008 one that I was like, yes, finally, but the wing broke off. Luckily, with these 2010 cars, it looks like it has a metal wing, so you don't have that wing problem. So that was the only thing that sucked about these is that, you know, the wing was a separate piece. It wasn't molded in like it was on these. But let me tell you what, man, again, with the Joey Logano 2010 car. This is definitely the best quality you can get for a NASCAR Diecast 164. I'm glad to finally have this car in my collection. I do have the Car Lover 2009 Aflac Winter Circles car as well, so maybe I'll do a side side comparison to show you guys how better quality this car is. Um, I was going to do a review on that, but since I got this, this is definitely going better than that car. That's for certain. But just packaging could be a little bit better. It's a little plain Jane, but heck, like I said, 2009 cars are the way to go. Speaking of which, we're not done with the Platinum cars. This is the last Platinum car I got. And this is from 2009. This is Tony Stewart's Office Depot. Office Depot um, primary. The first year he drove for his own team, Tony Stewart. Uh, Stewart House Racing. But even the packaging for 2009, guys, way better than 2010. You have the die cast render and the color of the paint scheme right there. Probably looked better with the red, but I do like the red wording. But <sighs> the 2009 packaging, man. It's $7 I got this thing. Probably cheaper, but $6.95. That, that is just amazing. Absolutely amazing right there. Uh, I believe this paint scheme also has a nice metallic red finish to it. So the metallic red looks pretty cool with that sparkle finish to it. Something that we don't really see good quality from anymore. Lionel Lily had to take that feature away from the Henry Motorsports diecast. Uh, I didn't realize the window net is also mesh. So you got different textures on this car. Rubber tires. They need to go back to the rubber tires, man, because that's going to make some great quality die cast. But, hey, NASCAR's never come back to that. Well, sorry, Lionel won't. All right, so next up, we do got some. I did bought some 2020 die casts. I might as well show you guys. Uh, they didn't really have the new releases. I think, like, the newest release I saw was the Daniel Suarez Comscope car. I probably could have got them there because you guys saw my Suarez review on that. Uh, yeah, that Cup Series banner uh, looked like shit. But this car I was really happy to get because this guy has been drying up, especially since he's going to the truck series next year. Probably get kick ass. John Hunter Nemechek's 2020. Um, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right. Um, SAG or SAC uh, 2020 car. Um, but yeah, this is a really cool die cast. I probably paid full retail price for this, so probably eight bucks. 
compared to the nine bucks we'll be paying for this year. But um, yeah, and they actually uh, spelled uh, Nemechek's name right. They did not put the extra C. So great job, Lionel, for fixing that boo boo. Unlike the Trump 164 that I reviewed. Um, which by the way, got a lot of, got a lot of good positive feedback from that video. So appreciate you guys' support. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be a cool car to review for a 2020 release. And I do got a lot more 2020 diecasts come along the way. Um, guys, I'm probably gonna be on the grind for some 2020 reviews because we have a shitload to review. Speaking of another 2020 car, I could not believe I found this car. I was like, man, I don't think I'm ever gonna find this car until the all-star version of this car comes out. You guys know what I'm talking about, but there was one left. And me and NASCAR Diecast Cup Series were both looking at that. I was looking at that, and he was looking at that. I was like, I gotta get that son of a bitch. This is Chase Elliott's 2020 Unifirst Chevrolet Camaro Z01 1LE. Last one at Jack, and it's all mine, baby. My God, this thing, even, it's even more better looking than the Casey Kane and William Byron car. I mean, I'm probably gonna do a step second comparison of this car with the Casey Kane car because I did not pick up the William Byron car. This paint scheme has grown to me. I didn't like it at first, but the more I look at it, the more I like it, and I'm kind of craving mint chocolate ice cream every time I look at this. I mean, I know it's a uniform company, but every time I see this, I'm like, man, this thing looks like mint chocolate chip ice cream, which is my favorite ice cream, by the way, so if you're all wondering. <laughs> but that is really damn cool, guys. Of course, we're going to get the all-star winner of that pretty soon, which, you know, the numbers are going to be shifted. All right, next up, we got ourselves another Roush car, which this one, I am a big fan of this paint scheme. Um, especially with my dad growing up in the military. Um, he, he didn't work for this branch. Um, he worked for the U.S. Army, but um, we did have some sponsors. Uh, I do remember uh, picking up some uh, some stuff from this tent um, when we were traveling around in the Army. But this is the National Guard Greg Biffle 2004 car. Wow. Wow. Holy crap, guys. When I saw this, I was like, I had to get it, man, because this is yet another one of my childhood cars right here, guys. I love this car. I think either between this or the Casey Mears Tau 7 National Guard car, those are the cars I just loved. I mean, you guys know me. I'm a big, if you guys know me, I'm a big fan of the military sponsored cars. I mean, this is like the second military car I got in this haul. So, so, you know, now I only got one, but two National Guard cars. But this one, I know it's going to be a popular review. The Team Caliper cars, man, these were the cars to get for the Roush cars. They did have a few at, um, at Watkins Glen a few years ago, I think well, like last year or so, or when I was there in 2015, but um, I called them the Gypsy Tents, but it was still pretty cool they had these, I think they had these in the Motorsport Show, which by the way, Motorsport Show looks like it's not happening this year, which sucks, so glad I went to Jack's after all, because my god, um, there's nothing better than doing die cash shopping to end the year, uh, compared to the beginning of this year, when I went to the Motorsport Show, but heck, you know, I only hope they're going to have, hopefully we'll have one in Syracuse in March, but I doubt it. But, hey, that's what diecast dealerships are for. Um, all right, I got a few more to show you guys and then wrap up this video and uh, um, probably crash after this, after the football game. Um, yeah, this is Kevin Harvick's 2004 Snap-On uh, Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Um, you guys know me, I'm a mechanic. I love the Snap-On cars, and there were two of these left. And me and Matt Jericho, who is also a mechanic, both got the last two. But what's really cool about this car, you can't really see it, but uh, this is one out of 1,008. So just like uh, the 124 Truex car I got, uh, or what was it? One of the Edwards 124s that was 1,008. Um, I have a lot of shit. My God. <laughs> if you look closely, not only that the hood opens on this and it's got rubber tires, but this, where the black is, it has a matte finish. And where the silver is, it's like a metallic finish. So we have like a dual finish going on right here, guys. So yeah, where the sil oh, even the wrench has like a metallic finish. There's like a little wrench right there uh, where the Snap-on logo is. That has a metallic finish to it. So yeah, this could be another cool die cast for you guys. What? Like, uh, I've lost count how many times. I mean, I, I have a thing for Snap-on, man. I mean, when you're a mechanic like me, Snap-on is the way to go. Snap-on is like, it's like, I don't know, like the best of the best. It's like the Mercedes of fucking uh, cars, but for tools. Um, you know, that's the best of the best. But this right here is pretty damn awesome. Especially with the packaging, guys. like that a lot. I do have some other 2004 cars that I got that I have on my collection with Truex. Um, there are definitely a lot of older Truex cars I have in that in that selection that I still need to review. But like I said, man, thank God I'm a diecast collector because I have a lot of stuff to review. We have four more that I can rest my voice. This next one right here, I definitely had to definitely decide which one I wanted. They, ha It's a Miller Lite car. And I'm going to go and tell you the car I didn't pick up, which was Kurt Busch's 2007 uh youth version the one with kurt's name on it 
I was this close to getting it, but the packaging was so yellow. It's probably yellow like my wall. Uh, probably not as yellow as, you know, the day glow yellow, but it was quite yellow. And I was like, I don't know about that. I mean, I kind of contradicted myself when I got the Legano car, but then I saw this. And I'm like, you know what? I'm liking this a lot more because this actually has a picture of the sponsor. And we don't see this anymore, guys. This is Brad Kazowski's 2013 Miller Lite Ford Fusion. The first year of the Gen 6 car. And might I say, guys, what happened to the packaging, guys? The packaging actually had some creativity in the first year for the Gen 6 with Lionel. Like, why did they discontinue this? That was cool. That was probably the last time we had creativity with the Gen with, with this. I mean, hopefully they do it again with the Gen 7 cars, because that'd be pretty damn cool. But I like that a lot. So look at that. They even got, you know, the freaking Miller Lite sponsorship on the box. On the box. I mean, that's cool. But we got the alcohol sponsorship. And, and I mean, it's sad for Miller Lite to leave NASCAR internally. So all of his cars have been drying up, guys. And I was lucky to find this. I mean, go try to find the Dodge diecast from 2012. Good freaking look. All right. From 2012 and 2011. But holy crap, man. That is a beauty right there. And I'm glad I got this. I'll probably do a review on this. But this is the 2013 one, guys. Do not get the 2014 version because unless you want the crappy WLS PTC mold, then good luck. Plus, it's at the white rims too. But look at the alcohol, man. Definitely quite quench thirsting. Uh, hopefully, any guys are 21 and plus might get that. But uh, yeah, I don't promote underage alcohol drinking in any way, shape, or form. And just like that, YouTube is going to demonetize this video. So nice job, Brian. All right, we got three left and going to wrap up this video. This next one. It's probably one of the most hardest cars to find for this guy. Ryan Blaney, just like the Universe card, there was one left. And when I saw this in the front room, I was like, dude, I'm dreaming. I'm fucking dreaming. I can't believe that I finally found this car after all these years. This is Ryan Blaney's 2016 Virginia Tech Ford Motorcraft car. Rookie car, too. I mean, you can't really tell in the back, but this car has rookie stripes. So this is his rookie car that he raced at one of the Bristol races. I think the Bristol Spring Race. Won the Bristol races. I only remember that because he introduced himself and there were a lot of Bristol fans that were not happy seeing a Virginia Tech car at the track. <laughs> I don't really watch that much college football, but that's pretty funny. But what a cool looking paint scheme, guys. And you guys who are v, uh, Virginia Tech fans, uh, shout out below. And I don't know, this diecast review will be going out to you guys. But really glad I finally found this car in this collection because, like I said, this car has been a bitch to find. And... I only paid it for what, like, I believe, what was the retail price at the time? Like six or seven dollars. So can't beat that at all. And then these last two, I did not get at Jack's, but a nice little funny story. There was a nice little funny stories that, you know, me and the guys did. Um, so we go, we go out and I was like, all right, I got my die cast, got my 14164s, my 4124s. I spend most of my money. I'm happy as a motherfucker. I got these two freaking white bags. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait to do the haul video. And then freaking my good friend Rob, Race Series 11, comes out with a nice big box. And he has a shitload of boxes in this car. This guy looked like fucking Santa Claus. Uh, this guy looked like fucking uh, the Diecast Santa Claus. I mean, forget about Diecast Santa on uh, Lionel Racing. Rob, man, holy crap. I mean, I'm sure not all those boxes were full of Diecast, but he brought out this little uh, beauty box. And when you open it up, it said, Hello, gorgeous. That was fucking funny. But he just opened it up, and it was full of random Diecast for the 164s. And he's like, Go for it. Take as many as you want. I'm like, are we doing like a like a freaking uh, die cast deal in here or something? Like, I, was, I hope people didn't think this was like a drug deal or something. Um, my lord, hey, you know, uh, I got I got the the freaking uh, Chase Elliott 2020 Hooters car. What you got? <laughs> but now, nah, um, I only picked up two in this, and I can't thank Rob enough. I mean, I'm probably gonna go ahead and buy him lunch. Um, my God, man, I mean, um, really great to have friends like that, uh, especially knowing that guy for ten years. And finally meeting him because last time I met Rob, my best friend, was in January. And usually we hang out two or three times. But anyway, it's not the point. This video is already way fucking long. It's probably the length of a Diecast News episode. But, heck, this is definitely worth it for my lack of uploads. These two I had to get and I'm planning to review them. For all the Larson fans out there, you're going to love me reviewing this car. This is Kyle Larson's 2018 uh, Trick Treat Win McDonald's car. Totally forgot they made this car. But it's got those damn emo that damn emoji on it. But not as bad as some of the other shit they had. Um, yeah, pretty cool. I do like the purple a lot. And we need definitely a lot more purple die cast in, um, the, in, uh, in, in NASCAR, guys. We do. I mean, what I mean, because that, that matte purple, man, is beautiful. And I had to get it. I'm sure all the Larson fans out there are going to love that. 
including my good friend, Mr. Darren Lewis. And the last car I had to get, um, I'm not a big fan. I, actually, I'm not really a fan of baseball in general, but I had to get this because I love the paint scheme. And it's a it's an elite car, so it has some cool functions to it. The hood opens up, the trunk opens up. Um, trunk, definitely, you know what I mean. We got uh, Christian Fittipaldi's, um, Christian Fittipaldi's 2003 um, New York Yankees uh, Dodge Intrepid um, club car. Funny thing, Rob reviewed this car, and he literally got it at the Motorsports Show this year. I was like, this is the same car you got at the Motorsports Show, because I was looking at this. I was like, oh, yeah, I might get this. And lo, I know, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, I finally have this car. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm not a big Yankees fan, but, heck, I love this paint scheme, guys. Um, that is pretty damn cool right there. But, yeah, other than that, guys, I mean, we got ourselves an empty white bag, so now it's ripped. Uh, once again, all the stuff I got from Jack's Racing Collectibles in Riverside, New Jersey. Check him out. Uh, he's got a website and a telephone, and uh, he is open, uh, what, like Wednesday through Saturday. Uh, and, and, you know, the other three days, um, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, he's closed. But, yeah, Wednesday through Saturday, guys, he is open. Um, all are from 11 to 4. But sometimes if you get there, um, he might open up a little early. So, that would be pretty damn cool. But, anyways, guys, it's been OBB, the Diecast News Guy. Thanks for watching this Diecast haul video. Hope you guys had a great Christmas. And, um... Heck, I mean, um, just like with my haul, guys, I mean, uh, feel free to DM me and show me what you guys got for Christmas. Because you guys know me, I love diecast as much as you do. I have a Discord where you can show off that stuff. Join if you guys haven't already. And, uh, yeah, I will catch you guys next time on another diecast video on this channel. This has been your boy, OBB. Let's sign up for now. And everybody, have a good new year.